these pieces and I played the fifth cello sonata when I was studying the instrument when I was younger and that's why I chose to use it as the inspiration for this piece um, and I think that all cellists are very lucky that Beethoven wrote a collection of sonatas for the instrument. As it happens what I was investigating when I was a poacher the Beethoven project was uh, new tuning techniques. Um, Specifically for the cello, I have one in London with me and I've restrung it and played around with the different tunings on the strings. So it was difficult for me at first to try and find a way to marry that interest I had at the time with Beethoven's material. This is the first time that I've written a piece where the, the inspiration or the launching point is another piece. Um, and I haven't been looking at Beethoven's music recently, but what I have been looking at is tuning systems. Uh, specifically on the cello uh, because this is the instrument that I have available to me and that I can experiment on. So the first challenge was finding a way to take Beethoven's material and integrate it with this new interest I have uh, with tuning systems. Um, so although all of the material in this piece is fundamentally taken from the Beethoven sonata, I have, for example, detuned one of the cello strings on one of the instruments to create a new harmonic relationship that didn't exist in the Beethoven, for example. The project changed the way I think about the sonatas because um, rather than simply looking at them as a performer and trying to develop strategies to play the piece properly, I was actually looking at the material of the sonata itself and the way in which the structures unfold um, and sort of getting a little bit under the hood of the piece as it were and understanding perhaps some of Beethoven's thinking uh, and that perhaps brought me closer to the piece than I think I was in the past. Yeah, so the title, Two Cellos, uh, Dilations, um, when I was taking fragments from the Beethoven Sonata, uh, I quite literally stretched them in time and then filled in the blanks, as it were, between pitches. And that's why you hear a lot of sort of uh, glissandi in this piece, for example. So I sort of thought of this as kind of dilating in a way, or a dilation of Beethoven's material, not unlike sort of eye drops in your eye, expanding your pupil a little bit. Um, it's sort of a time dilation and a harmonic dilation, I suppose, yeah. of Beethoven. <laughs> well, actually, I, I think the only times I met them all was at the, the Adamson House, which was an old Royal Conservatory property in uh, Mississauga, I think, oh, on, I think on the lakefront. Yeah. I think it no longer exists. The, the um, building is there, but it's no longer uh, RCM RCM property. RCM property yeah. Right. So in any event, we, would, we were studying with the same cello teacher at the time, and these sort of end of year recitals and mid year recitals would take place there. So I remember seeing them all playing the cello, performing. Um, I believe with a family member accompanying you? Well, my mother usually accompanied me. That's right, I remember that too, yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember my mom saying, like, oh, I wish I could do that for you, you know? <laughs> and, you know, that wasn't how it worked. That's, so that's how I met Mall. And then Brian, I've just met you through Mall, I suppose, even yeah. though we were actually at the University of Toronto at the same time. Well, it, it's sort of in the language that I've been interested in the last perhaps six months to a year only, so it is, I think, overall new for me. Um, I think all the techniques on the instrument I've seen before, even though I haven't perhaps written them before. Mm -hmm. um, but the tuning relationship specifically, uh, and some of the harmonics that are a little bit more peculiar that are being used on the instrument, uh, these are things that I, I haven't done before. I think they should not necessarily expect something that sounds like Beethoven, even though it might be compositionally related to Beethoven, and instead to sort of listen to the sounds simply as sounds in themselves, and not be thinking about things like melody or lyricism, or things that we might associate with that kind of early romantic, late classical Western sound, um, and hopefully to enjoy some of the new sounds that they might hear that result from the different tuning system that is of course not native to the child.